and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at Transformers Generation 1 Reflector and I love this toy. Originally released in 1986, he retailed for $10 and 2 robot points. That is because this guy was not available on shelves or anywhere in retail stores. You had to send away a mail order for this guy. Now, this particular reflector that we have here in front of us is another one of those unofficial re-releases or reissues or KOs, call it whatever you want to call it. So uh, this is another one of those that I've picked up recently and uh, very happy with what I found. So I'm going to show you uh, some of the things to look out for if, uh, if you're wanting to get something like this or if you just want to know what the differences are so you know what to look out for. So real quick, let's just back up and take a look at the packaging. And why am I showing you the packaging? I don't usually show you the packaging. Well, that's because, I, like I said, if uh, this guy was a mail away uh, figure, you got, originally when you got a reflector, you got him in a little uh, baggy that was inside of an unmarked box. So if you're getting a brand new reflector, and he comes in a box like this, that is your first warning that this is not the real deal. <laughs> the reflector did not come in a box. However, I got to give it to you, to these guys. Um, that is a beautiful, beautiful box. Check that out. They made it beautiful artwork. You've got the uh, change, change finish um, Photoshop up there on the top. Um, you know, artwork of the figures and the camera, you know, product shot on the bottom, you know, product shot on the sides. It looks just like the real thing it doesn't there's there's a different feeling in the cardboard between this box and the original boxes but it's very very close and you've got you know your your battle artwork in the back there from around that era uh 1986 boxes there and there's a red tracks right there red tracks look at that so yeah and you've got your your you know your tech specs and uh, i think did he i'm i don't remember off the top of my head but i think he did come with uh with a little uh, red visor that you can put in front of this to look at the red tech specs there. There's your two robot points right there. This would be what you guys would cut off and send away, you know, with money in a little order form to get your your um, your figures. So, like, you know, Reflector here and uh, some of the other figures that I've shown uh, before, um, like the Omnibots. Those were also um, mail aways that you would get with those robot points. So, there you go. There's a box that this guy came in. So, again, you know, remember, if you're getting a brand new Reflector, he comes in a box. He's not the real thing. Reflector never came in a box like this. Um, other than that, let's just uh, get zoomed back into uh, this guy. Uh, I am really, really happy with what I have found here with this Reflector. This is a very, very good figure. So, Reflector here is a camera and, uh, you know, just a very, very old style 35 millimeter camera as you can see uh very tiny he's uh in camera mode so only about four inches long from side to side here he's about two and a half inches tall at the top of the flash here so very very small camera so he would be like a spy camera and of course when you turn him around everything falls apart because you can see the the three robot legs right there you can even see one of the heads uh but the top of this head right here has a little button so you can click on that and pretend you're actually taking pictures uh, the lens is really cool because the lens actually has a full working lens inside there. So you'll see that there's nothing here in the front, uh, directly in front of this lens here. Uh, but when you look through the lens, you can still see through it. And when I put my, fi my, my finger in front of the lens here, you can actually see the finger moving over there. So he does have a little mirror full working lens inside, which is really cool it doesn't really magnify anything or if it does it barely magnifies anything at all but you know it's there and it's cool that they did that uh, a lot of die cast feels really good it feels like the real deal this is a really really good representation of that original reflector and for the price he was great so let's look at some of the accessories that he came with he did come in a styrofoam tray again that came inside of that box and he's got the missiles on the uh, on the tree there he's got a little instruction sheet inside of a little baggie and then of course he came with uh three weapons one for spectro uh that's the weapon for spectro right there and then there's the weapon for viewfinder and the weapon for spyglass there you go and of course there's a third missile i cut one of the missiles off the tree so there you go so one of the things um that i did notice there were some tolerances 
Other than that, I've had no issues with this guy other than some of the tolerances. So the flash is spring loaded, which is really nice. So you can load a missile in and then fire it away. And it doesn't work 100% of the time, but at least uh, for the shot, it did work. So issue number one that I found with this figure was the spring inside of the flash was completely turned sideways. So I actually had to get in there and fix that. But uh, and that might have just been my my copy. Uh, it, might, it might not be, you know, uh, every copy out there. But uh, as you can see, I have no problems loading now and, and firing that missile. So that's really, really nice. So, but that was one issue that I got with this figure. Um, the other one, we'll start getting him. Uh, actually, I'll show you another issue that I had once, uh, once we get him transformed. Why don't we go ahead and uh, just back up a little bit and get uh, get the figure transformed into uh, robot mode real quick before I transform him. Let me show you. Uh, this may be another one of those. You'll have to take my word for it. It's just, it's kind of cold in here. So a lot of times these tend to not work, but actually I got it to work. So there you go. I don't know how well that's showing off. It's it's in person, it's showing off real well. Um, let's see if we can get it. There you go. Let me try that again. I can see it really, really good in person. It's not coming off that well on camera, but there you go. You can see it right there. So some of the other figures, a lot of times when I have them on die cast, uh, it's a little cold in this room and it won't show the uh, rub symbol all that well. But let's get him transformed. First thing we're going to do is remove the flash. Go ahead and set that aside and remove the lens and we'll set that aside. And then we're going to separate uh, this camera into three parts. And you can see the lens right there also working. You can still see behind there. See that? So uh, go ahead and separate the three parts of the robots. And here is where I, where I ran into my next tolerance issue. And you'll notice how I'm being very careful and just kind of twisting that apart. The inside of this leg uh, for Spectro was very, very, very tight. And the first time that I transformed them, this peg for viewfinder stayed in there. It just It just stayed in there. So I actually had to remove the sticker, which was unfortunate because I had already put the stickers on. And having to remove the sticker, I actually scratched it up a little bit. I had to remove the sticker, open the leg up it, to, retrie <laughs> to retrieve my peg. And then, um, so the bite marks that you see on there, on this peg, are from my needle nose pliers. They're not from uh, them coming in looking crappy. That was, those were caused by me. I had, uh, unfortunately, had to grab those and, uh, you know, cut a little bit of my bite marks in there. But then I took a, um, uh, some, uh, not sandpaper, but uh, um, one of my, one of my files and just filed the inside of that until I could get the peg in and out uh, relatively easily without, uh, you know, as you can see, without the, the peg staying in there. Uh, it's still a little tight and I want it that way. Uh, because I don't want the camera falling apart, obviously. Uh, but I still, you know, I'm just being gentle and careful whenever I pull it up, pull, pull them apart. So that was the second issue. Uh, something that may possibly you have to look out for if you were to get one of these figures. So now the transformation for these two guys are going to be pretty much the same. We're just going to take the legs and flip them under. And then take the arms and flip them off to the side. And that's Spectro right there. And take uh, Spyglass, same thing, only uh, a little bit reversed, whereas last time that would have been the front of Spectro. This time around, uh, the backside is going to be the front for Spyglass. So there's these two guys transform right there. And then if you finally viewfinder, uh, it's very similar with the legs. You're just going to pull the legs down. And the legs were pegged in. He's got two little pegs and two little ports right there. So those were pegged in. And then you're going to take the arms and you're going to split them apart. This whole housing is going to come apart. And this is tight, which is nice, but sometimes can be a little scary because these arm assemblies here are made out of plastic. So again, I'm just being uh, extra careful with them um, because I, I just don't want to break it. So there you go. Uh, so there you go. That's Reflector, all three robots uh, in robot mode. And, and I love these. I absolutely love these guys. Uh, they're just so, so weird and different and cool. Here in robot mode, uh, every one of Reflector's robots are approximately four inches tall. So, you know, they're about the size of a Star Wars figure. So they're not very big. Now, they are, uh, there's plenty of die cast in here, which is nice. Um, Spectro and Spyglass both have the torsos in uh, die cast metal, so they feel nice and solid. And then with Reflector, I will just let him fall. Uh, let's see the legs and also the inside of the body right there, you see, is also 
uh, die cast. So these guys are nice and hefty. They feel really, really good. Uh, for articulation on both uh, Spyglass and Spectro, well, let's do them individually because there is a little bit of difference. There is, you can rotate the head on Spectro. You can uh, rotate the arms all the way around and you can hear that squeaking there. So it's a little tight. Uh, I guess he can flex in a little bit. Urgh, let me tell you something, brother. So he can do that. <laughs> and then the legs are, uh, they're not attached together. I'm just moving them together. But you can go forward and backwards. And because of transformation, you can go all the way back on this guy. And then you can also bend the knee on Spectro. Now on Spyglass, because he's um, uh, backwards from Spectro, it's going to be a little different. Again, you can rotate the head, which is nice. Once again, you can rotate the arms. Uh, and then I guess you can go back with the arms, which, uh, you know, accomplishes nothing but now with spy glass you can bring the legs all the way forward into a sitting position which is really nice however you lose the knee articulation on him because his knee is bent forward which does nothing that just looks like a really painful soccer injury so that that'll do nothing for you so there's that and then finally for viewfinder viewfinder can move his arms up and down uh, he cannot go all the way around because of these big shoulder things that he's got there. So that's only going to go forward that far. And then he's not going to go uh, backwards any because that's going to uh, hit the chest right there. So Now the legs can go backward and forward, as you can see. And he's also got knee articulation. So, you know, for a G1 figure, not terrible articulation, uh, really. Now, he, he doesn't have any head articulation because his head is molded into the top piece there. So there you go. Now, uh, let's get into weapons real quick. They can't hold their weapons, so uh, Spectro will give him his weapon. I love this weapon. It, it, just, it just reminds me of an Optimus Prime weapon, and you know how much I love Optimus Prime. So, we'll just pick that right in there. Uh, we're going to give... Come on, stand up. Uh, before I give the next two weapons, I want to show you this. So, if you remember, the, um, the Flash uh, was a missile launcher, okay? And... There's a little peg on the back of the missile launcher. However, this peg doesn't fit on anybody's hands. I've gone on all three of these guys on all of their peg holes, um, and I, it just it just won't peg into anybody's hand. So I don't know if that was the case with the original G1 figure, or if this is a tolerance issue with this figure. I'm not sure, but there again. Uh, this looks like it's meant to be held and fired as a weapon, and I can't do that. So there's one thing to uh, be aware of. So now let's uh, give Spyglass his weapon. And I'm saving Viewfinder for last because there's one more thing I want to show you. So uh, if you notice on the back, uh, no, on the front of the box rather, let's see if I can get that. All right, so on the front of the box right there, you can see he's holding this weapon. All right, but it also shows the lens. Let's bring that in front here. There you go. That's much better. So you've got the weapon, which, by the way, looks like it's chrome, but the pictures show them in black. So I don't know if they're supposed to be chrome, if the original figure weapons were chrome, uh, or if they were black, black. I don't know. But anyway, you can see that Viewfinder is holding this weapon, and he's also got the weapon surrounded by this lens piece right here. So... Again, I don't know if this is a KO thing, a tolerance thing, or if this is just wrong. I, I don't know. But this won't go in this way at all, okay? And then if you go in this way, it doesn't clip in or hold in in any way, shape, or form. It just it just hangs there. So you could give him the weapon that way, but this is just going to you know hang right there. So it's just really not accomplishing anything. So again, I don't know if that's supposed to clip in there or not. But uh, at least for this version of the figure, that nothing's happening there. So you're just as well to leave this just sitting off to the side. Now on Viewfinder, his uh, weapon holes on his hands are on the side. So you have to mount his uh, weapons there on the side just like so. So there you go. There's uh, Viewfinder with his gun. And we'll bring in Spectro and Spyglass. So uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm Again, I'm very, very happy with this figure. Um, I know that... A lot of people don't care for KOs or um, unofficial reissues or whatever you want to call this. A lot of people are not going to care about this. Um, some people look for things like this so that they can then turn them around and resell them as originals. I completely do not agree with that. Don't do that. Uh, that is not cool. Um, I like these 
because they are affordable and they have very little, if any, difference from the original figures. So rather than spending a small fortune on an original figure, I'm just as happy to get something like this that's almost identical to the original to put on my shelf for me to enjoy. So for me and for my purpose, I love these, but I do understand that a lot of people are not going to care about these. I do get comments. I've gotten comments on some of my other figures that people, uh, some of my other KOs, uh, and you know, people don't like that and that's fine. Uh, I like these, but I also want to show you things to look out for when you are getting these. So there they are. Uh, again, absolutely love, love, love these figures. Uh, and you know, if you can, if you hunt around online, you'll be able to find them. They're relatively cheap. And, uh, as you can see, they're not bad. They're, they're actually pretty good figures. There's some tolerance issues. They're minor, but at the end of the day, they, they did turn out to be pretty good figures. And I'm very, very happy with them. And, uh, and I'm starting to ramble in circles. So I think I'm going to cut it off there. I think that covers Transformers Generation 1 unofficial reissue. <laughs> Reflector. What did you think of this figure and what would you like to see me review next? Let me know by leaving me a comment, give me some thumbs up, subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see and I'll talk to you next time.